Good day everyone, this is Mam Sam and welcome to Creative Writing. For our first lesson, we will talk about what is creative writing. But before that, let us know the objectives for today's discussion. First, we should be able to define creative writing. Second, we should be able to use imagery, diction, and figures of speech to evoke meaningful responses from the readers. And now, let's begin. So what is creative writing? Creative writing is any composing that goes beyond ordinary expert, editorial, scholarly, or specialized types of writing. In other words, creative writing is the art of making things up or putting a creative splash on history. Next, what is sensory imagery? Sensory imagery includes the utilization of elucidating language to make mental pictures. In abstract terms, it is a sort of symbolism. The thing that matters is that tangible symbolism works by drawing in a reader's five senses. In other words, sensory imagery is an artistic gadget that the author utilizes to draw in the reader's mind in numerous levels. So what are these five senses? Of course, we have the sight, the sound, the taste, the touch, and the smell. Moving on, I will now introduce to you the forms of imagery. The first form of imagery is the visual imagery. Visual imagery engages the sense of sight. Descriptions can be associated to visual imagery. Physical attributes including color, size, shape, lightness and darkness, shadows, and shade are all part of visual imagery. Here are some examples. Her phone signaled, immediately setting her teeth on edge. She looked at a broken screen, saw his name, and slapped the phone back on her desk. Here is another example. Our money stretched across her couch, legs twitching excitedly. He knew he must be dreaming of the kittens he tries to capture every morning when he is at the kitchen. In visual or mental imagery, it involves the sense of having pictures in the mind. In the given examples, we had already imagined what the person or the characters has been doing. The next form of imagery is the gustatory imagery. Gustatory imagery engages the sense of taste. Flavors are considerations in gustatory imagery, which includes the basic taste such as sweet, salty, bitter, and sour, as well as the textures and sensations between the act of eating. Here are the examples. The food tasted good. The sweet fondant icing mounted on my tongue. The word delightful came to my mind. Summer has always tasted like a hot chocolate to me. His kisses tasted like strawberries under the sun. So gustatory imagery appeals to our sense of taste by describing something the narrator says. The third form of imagery is the auditory imagery. Auditory imagery engages the sense of hearing. Sound devices such as onomatopoeia and alliteration can help create sounds in writing. Example, Eric sat alone at the bench nearest the main door so he wouldn't miss Via. The room was noisy. The clang of heavy dishes glided from the kitchen as the eyes twinkled as it settled in his water glass. His watch read 9.30, she wasn't coming. In auditory imagery, it is a form of imagery that is used to organize and analyze sounds when there is no auditory stimulus present. In the given example, we use the word clang to describe the dishes from the kitchen and tinkle to describe the ice from his water glass. And now we have the olfactory imagery. Olfactory imagery engages the sense of smell. Simile is common in using olfactory imagery because it lets writers to compare a particular scent to common smells like dirt, grass, manure, or roses. 
The use of scents and stinks are common ways to use olfactory imagery. Here are the examples. The scent of the teak when my mother cooks rice cake is really nostalgic to me. Another example, the street going to their house is stinks of manure and the stairwells is stack of moldering wood and rot droppings. Just like in the example, we compared the scent of Latik to her mother's rice cake and we used the word stink or stank to describe the street and the stairwell. The last or the fifth form of imagery is the tactile imagery. Tactile imagery engages the sense of touch, the feel, textures, and many sensations a human being experiences when touching something are associated in tactile imagery. Differences in temperature is also part of tactile imagery. Here is an example. When we quickly plunge into the cool water, it took our breath away and raised goosebumps to our arms. In this form of imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of touch by describing something the speaker of the poem feels on their body. For our next topic, we will talk about what is diction in writing. So diction is the careful selection of words to communicate a message or establish a particular voice or writing style. In other words, diction refers to the linguistic choices a writer makes to effectively convey an idea, a point of view, or tell a story. Next, what is the purpose of diction in writing? Writers speak explicit words and expressions relying upon the result they are attempting to accomplish. The motivation behind a bit of composing decides its expression. In writing and fiction composing, authors regularly utilize casual lingual authority and interesting expressions or words utilized for non-exacting implications similar to comparisons and analogies. In other words, the purpose of diction is to establish the mode and the tone of the passage. And now we have the different types of diction in writing. The first type of diction is formal diction. Formal diction uses grammatical rules and uses proper syntax or the formation of sentences. It is considered as a professional choice of words which can be found in legal documents like business correspondences and academic articles. So in other words, formal diction is the use of sophisticated language. It does not use slang or even colloquialisms. Next, we have informal diction. Informal diction is more conversational and often used in narrative literature. This casual vernacular represents how people communicate in real life, which gives an author the freedom to depict more realistic characters. Most of the short stories and novels use informal diction to make it easier to understand by anyone. So informal or informal language is the language of everyday speech. It should never be used in formal or academic writing except when it is a part of a quotation or block of dialogue. The third type of diction is colloquial diction. These are expressions which are connected to informal. It is generally representing a particular region, place, era, or period. Contractions in American English, such as ain't instead of isn't, is an example of colloquial expressions. The use of colloquialism makes the writing more realistic. In other words, colloquial diction is the use of informal, local expressions, or slang. The fourth type of diction is the slang diction. Slang is an informal language or specific words used by a particular group of people. You'll usually hear slang spoken more often than you see it put in writing, though emails and texts often contain many conversational slang words. So in slang diction, these are words used today and spoken out loud by friends or close associates. Examples of these words are dope, lit, and cancel. And the last but not the least, the poetic diction. Poetic diction is driven by melodious words that identify with a particular subject reflected in a sonnet to make a musical or agreeable sound. 
It generally includes the utilization of elucidating language. In some cases, it is used to set a beat or rhyme. So poetic diction is the term used to refer to the linguistic style, the vocabulary, and the metaphors used in writing poetry. And now, we will talk about what is figure of speech. A figure of speech is a rhetorical device that achieves a special effect by using words in a distinctive way. Figurative language is often associated with literature and with poetry in particular. Whether we are conscious of it or not, we use figure of speech every day in our own writing and conversations. In other words, figure of speech is a word or phrase that means something more or something other than it seems to say. It is the opposite of the literal expression. Let's proceed. So there are several kinds of figures of speech. First, we have the simile. Simile is the comparison between two fundamental dissimilar things that have certain qualities in common using like or as. Example, Michael was as white as a sheet of paper after he walked out of the horror movie. In the given example, we use the word as to compare Michael to a sheet of paper. Next we have is the metaphor. Metaphor is an implied comparison between two dissimilar things that have something in common. So metaphor is used to describe an object or action in a way that is not literally true. Example, she has a heart of gold. In the example, we compare a heart to a gold which are two dissimilar things. Next, we have onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is the use of words that imitate the sounds associated with the objects or actions they refer to. In other words, onomatopoeia is a word that describes a sound and actually mimics the sound of an object. Example, the clap of thunder went bam and scared my poor dog. In the given example, we use the word bam to describe the sound of thunder. The fourth kind of figure of speech is personification. Personification is the utilization of inanimate objects or abstraction to associate with human qualities or abilities. So personification is a common form of metaphor in where human characteristics are attributed to non-human things. Example, the leaves of the fire tree are dancing with the wind during dry season in our country. We use the word dancing to describe the characteristics of the leaves of the fire tree. Next, we have apostrophe. Apostrophe means directly stating or calling a non-existent person or an inanimate object as though it were a living being. It commonly uses apostrophe as a punctuation. So apostrophe is a figure of speech in which a speaker directly addresses someone or something that is not actually present or cannot respond in reality. Example, Oh, Rain! Rain, where are you? Rain, we really need you right now. Our town needs you badly. In the given example, the character or the speaker is talking to the rain as if it is someone that has human characteristics. Next, we have the hyperbole. Hyperbole is the use of exaggerated terms for the purpose of emphasis or heightened effect. Example, I have a ton of homework to do when I get home. I need to go home now. In the given example, we use the word ton to give emphasis that he has a lot of homework. Another kind of figure of speech is synecdoche. Synecdoche is a figure of speech in which a part is used to represent the whole. Synecdoche is used to describe or signify the whole or vice versa. Example, Mark is asking for the hand of our daughter. We use the word hand to represent the word marriage as a whole. Next, we have metonymy. Metonymy is a word or phrase that is substituted for another with which it is closely associated, linking words that are related to the word to be replaced. 
So metonymy means change of name. As a literary device, it is a way of replacing an object or idea with something related to it instead of stating what is actually meant. Example, the use of the word vow instead of wedding and the pen stands for the written word. For the last two, we have oxymoron. Oxymoron is the combination of contradictory or incongruous words such as cruel kindness. In other words, it is the pairing of two words together that are opposing and or contradictory. Example, bitter sweet. In the given example, it is already understood that the words bitter and sweet are both contradictory. But the thing is, when you combine the words together, they both create another meaning. And lastly, we have the paradox. Paradox is a statement or proposition that despite sound reasoning from acceptable premises, leads to a conclusion that seems to be senseless, logically unacceptable, or self-contradictory. Example, this is the beginning of the end, said Eeyore, always the pessimist. We use the word beginning to complement the word end. Just like in the example, it is a statement that appeals at first to be contradictory, but upon reflection, then makes sense. So that's it, but before we officially end our discussion, let us have a summary of what we have learned today. Again, what is creative writing? Creative writing is any composing that goes beyond ordinary expert, editorial, scholarly, or specialized types of writing. Then we have the five forms of imagery. We have the visual, gustatory, auditory, olfactory, and tactile imagery. Next, what is diction? Diction is the careful selection of words to communicate a message or establish a particular voice or writing style. What are the different types of diction? We have the formal, informal, colloquial, slam, and poetic. Next, we have the figures of speech. It is a rhetorical device that achieves a special effect by using words in a distinctive way. So what are the kinds of figures of speech? First, we have the simile, metaphor, onomatopoeia, personification, apostrophe, hyperbole, synecdoche, metonymy, oxymoron, and paradox. Also a reminder that the activities for this lesson are already indicated in your modules. Upon answering, please follow your weekly home learning plan. Remember to write your name, section, the subject, and activity number. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed and learned something for today's discussion. Thank you and see you on our next 